You know those moments when we expect one thing and something else happens. Now sometimes those surprises are insignificant, like an unpredicted storm that's close up the highway. And sometimes the expectation is great because we hear from a friend, especially at Christmas time, from whom we haven't heard for a long time. But sometimes the curveball threatens to strike us out. The moment when the marriage you thought would last forever didn't. The loneliness when an adult son or daughter is time for others, but little or no time for us. When a person you should have been able to trust turns out in quite a different way. So the question is, what do we do whenever life turns out to be not as expected, not as hoped for? Our gospel message this morning records such a moment. John the Baptist was in prison. He was there for challenging the morals of one of the royal family. But more than that, he was telling the people that the only one who deserves the title Lord was the Messiah who was to come, not the one who was the king, the Lord in Rome. John, awaiting his faith in prison, heard of the ministry of Jesus. And Jesus was beginning to seize the imagination and acclaim of the people. But the stories that John heard about Jesus did not match with the expectations that he had of how the Messiah would come and act it out. John used strong metaphors to describe the Messiah's ministry. Axes laid to the roots of trees, winnowing fork in his hand, setting fire to consume sinners. But here Jesus was, let me read it for me. Take the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector, a collaborator with the Romans, an outcast of the people, and he's up a tree in many ways. And Jesus comes along and he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, come on down. I want to stay in your house today. Or the way Jesus took the tree of the woman who was caught in adultery. Woman, does anyone condemn you? No, Lord, no one. Well, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So Jesus healed the sick and he told great stories. And he embraced the little children. He didn't soft pedal his message to placate those in power. And he didn't preach gospel light for an admiring crowd. It's just that Jesus did not seem to be ushered in the fury and the judgment of God, as did John. So John, outraged, sent messengers to ask Jesus point blank, are you the one who is to come, or do we look for another? He was alone in a prison cell, and all he had to sustain him was the hope the hope found in the person of Jesus. You know, frustrated expectations can swell out of proportion in a prison cell. So John binged his hope on the person and the ministry of Jesus, and we can understand his doubts. He had reason to question this Jesus. When we are so sure of something or someone, or some institution, and they do not respond as we legitimately hoped, we're all prone to wonder, has our hope been misplaced? Hope is a very precious thing to betray, and none of us takes that betrayal lightly. So the question, are you the one who is to come, or do we look for another? Jesus didn't respond with anger, or with a bruised ego. He had too much confidence in himself. Instead, he appealed to the prophets as they spoke of the time of the Messiah. He speaks metaphorically. Not to interpret scripture literally, but he speaks metaphorically, like the blind receiving their sight and time, the lame leaping for joy, the poor hearing the good news. Jesus knew that John would recognize the fingerprints of God in this list. He would interpret scripture correctly because he knew that somehow the Messiah was all about bringing life in many different kinds of ways. But Jesus had to recalibrate the thinking of John, enlarging the focus of John's expectation, allowing John to be surprised, and allowing Jesus to set the tone 
of his own ministry and the way of salvation. So one day Jesus would challenge the principalities and the powers of his day, and he would suffer a martyr's death, even as did John. But the timing and pattern of Jesus' ministry would be that of welcoming, inviting, understanding, graciousness, patience. In Jesus we see the heart of God even as we see the power of God. And that heart is wide open to his creation, brimming with love and mercy. Wanting everyone to choose reconciliation to become one with him and one with one another. So did Jesus reveal the character of God, ministering to those most in need, most on the outside, most vulnerable, as was Jesus himself. And we assume that John got the message because we don't hear any more about his doubting Jesus. And many of his disciples ultimately followed Jesus, not fearing to be thought of as disloyal to John. So then the question remains not for John or for his disciples, but for us, for you and for me. How will we deal with life when it serves up a dish that was not what we expected, not yet for which we hoped? John and his disciples had to reinterpret their expectations. They gulped, they trusted Jesus, and they followed in his way. You know, as we live our lives, we cannot see around the corner. We don't know exactly what awaits us. But if we have any wisdom at all, we will know that somehow we will suffer losses of many kinds. And we will be disappointed. Sometimes in ourselves and sometimes in those we love. We will be disappointed in our hopes for the nation and for our church. But if we trust that in it all, as did Jesus, God is present. And he calls us to trust by following in his way. We will make room in our expectations for whatever comes along, trusting that in our acceptance of our vulnerability, God will bring forth new life in us, even as he did in Jesus. Commitment and trust and following in the way, that's what our Jesus is all about. Father Walter Burkhart, a prominent theologian, concludes their reflection on today's reading in this way. Advent lays an awesome responsibility on us Christians. Ever since Christ took his smiles and tears from our earth, it is we who have to let the world know that he who is to come has already come, that he is still here, and we are the works that will reveal him or conceal them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.